Ian Nankervis arrived at Cadinia Park from local club Barwon in 1967, playing one senior game as second rover behind club champion Billy Goggin before breaking through to be hailed as one of the recruits of the year in 1968, switching between the forward pocket and roving duties. Short pass by Nankervis, find its mark taken by Ocker Stevens. I suppose when it gets down to what it's all about, the two fellas uh, in particular were uh, Polly Farmer and uh, Rod Olsen and uh, of course Billy Goggin. I've learnt tremendously off uh, those three people when perhaps at stages you felt that you've achieved everything, they've been able to show you that you can go and achieve even better things. Nan Kerbis developed into a handy kick winner and regular goal scorer, utilising his enormous stamina and exceptional anticipation to position himself to good effect. Nan Kerbis, snap shot for goal. His continued development was rewarded with his first club best and fairest in 1972 and his share of the club goal kicking title in 1975. But Nan Kerbis was struggling to find form during the 1976 pre season, so new coach Rod Olsen decided to trial him in the back pocket. After eight years as a goal-scoring ball winner, Nan Kervis quickly adapted to make the position his own, with a revolutionary running link game which proved to be well ahead of its time. And Nan Kervis takes the mark. Ian Nan Kervis, half-back. Slight in build, Ian Nan Kervis was well capable of playing on bigger or smaller opponents, a relatively rare commodity amongst defenders of the day. His ability to win the ball, combined with his excellent endurance and tidy skill, enabled him to work off his man and become the catalyst of seemingly endless attacking drives from defence. Good football by Geelong. And this is Geelong's letdown. They're going across the ground instead of going down, kicking with a win. Away they go through Ian Nan Kervis, not trusting the slippery surface. Going down in the direction of Sandilands and Donoghue. Neither can get it. Oh, threading through beautifully, Cousins. Oh, must be a free kick for Geelong. No! no. Oh. oh, he's got to be getting a square off free at the finish to Terry Wright. So effective was he that he became the first defender in the history of the game to be tagged in a bid to negate his influence. He won back-to-back -back best and fairest in 1976 and 77, taking over the captaincy from younger brother Bruce in 1978, ultimately becoming the third longest serving skipper in club history, highly regarded as an exceptional leader and role model both on and off the field. Gets it out to Dacos, he ever runs the ball. He represented Victoria on 12 occasions, captaining the state in 1979 before ultimately hanging up the boots at the end of season 1983 after a club record 325 games spread across 17 years at the highest level. At times you sit back and think, well, I, I had a bit of luck and I, I think that's what you need. You need a little bit of luck to be able to play 300 games. Uh, but, but deep down, the, the thing that really perhaps uh, keeps me going and uh, wanting to play is the thought of playing in a grand final and uh, when you see players who can perhaps play for one or two years and, and play in grand finals and winning grand finals that's what it's all about and the, the longer you play you realise that it's a team thing not, a, not an individual thing. Three time best and fairest, all Australian and an emergency in Geelong's team of the century he is revered at the Cattery as one of the most respected and most consistent to have ever pulled on the famous blue and white hoops. Umpardella whistling on play and a free kick going to Ian Nankervis. Two brothers and the still alongside Ian and Bruce Nankervis. Ian Nankervis down towards Andrews. Finishing in the top ten of the club best and fairest, a phenomenal 14 times in 16 seasons, including seven top three placings. You know, you look back over 300 games in 17 years, the great personalities that you've been associated with and, and uh, uh, the experiences you've had with them. But, also, the, you know, the individual awards are great, uh, being able to win the best and fairest of the club on a number of occasions and uh, representing my state have also been great achievements. Ian Nankervis, a 2005 inductee into the Australian Football Hall of Fame.